Welcome to the Free Birth Podcast, a supportive space for people who are learning, exploring, and celebrating their autonomous choices in childbirth. Together, we'll unpack truths, share personal stories, and claim our ability to birth freely and intuitively. Here's your host, Emily Saldea. There are many ways to interact with Free Birth Society. These include our incredible offering, The Complete Guide to Free Birth, which is the most comprehensive online course available on how to give birth in your power. We also have a beautiful free birth meditation program called the Sovereign Birth Meditation Series, designed to help you release your fears and actualize your dream birth. Our latest course is called Through the Veil, a profoundly personal, radical pregnancy companion program by Yolanda Norris Clark that offers the opportunity to travel with Yolanda as she moves through the last trimester of her most recent pregnancy and invites you into her birth room to witness the birth of her eighth child. And if you're looking for a deeper connection and the opportunity for sisterhood in community with radical, like-minded women, the Free Birth Society private membership is for you, and you can apply on our website to become a member. We also offer personalized one-on-one transformational coaching with a focus on learning the tools to move out of victim consciousness and towards self-responsibility. Skills that translate to freedom, not only in the context of birth and mothering, but in every area of life. And finally, we are offering all of you, our amazing listeners, the free gift of Yolanda's 20-minute Birth Affirmations audio recording, a gorgeous, soothing meditation that every pregnant mother should have. So just head on over to our website at freebirthsociety.com, sign up, and Yolanda's affirmations will be sent directly to your inbox. This week, I'm bringing you a very edgy episode. I have invited four free birthing women from our community onto the show today. What begins as a public response to a recent podcast episode from Indie Birth that upset us and many women far and wide transforms into an epically powerful and insightful roundtable discussion on the free birth community at large, how to reclaim and recreate community amongst radical women, and a poignant perspective from two women of color as to why trauma-informed free birth is indeed extremely valid. Just a heads up here, we do get heated and curse openly per usual, so consider yourself warned. Enjoy the conversation. Ah, Should we start with a deep breath? (laughs) Ah. Okay, we are here today to attempt to do something um, pretty pretty vulnerable and and really quite powerful. And I, I'm even noticing as I start this that I have flutters in my stomach. And even though we just chatted for 45 minutes, um, this is something, yeah, just to start at the beginning and just to really name that what we are going to attempt to do um, is... I think a little, a little radical, a little out there. I don't, I don't know if this is really getting done um, too much in, in women's spaces or birth spaces. So what that is, is um, we are gathered today. I have five of us here. So I have four guests with me today. We'll introduce them in a moment. Um, and our intention with this episode is to um, respond to a different podcast uh, and a different uh, podcast episode that came out last week, um, which was titled "The Honest Truth About a Free Birth." Oh shit, was that what it was called? "The Honest Truth of Free Birth," um, and it was done by Marin Green of Indie Birth. And uh, I'll just say right at the top of this that uh, it it upset a lot of women. Uh, it upset a lot of women in our community. And it really upset me. I'm still upset about it. And 
we are going to try to do our best today from our highest integrity to respond um, to, uh, with our thoughts and our feelings to some specific aspects of this of this uh, episode, uh, while at the same time not attacking uh, the creator of this content at all. Um, I have nothing personally against Marin. Um, I actually have a great deal of respect for her. Um, and, and, and I actually really want to take this moment here to credit that Indie Birth and, and Marin Green specifically was uh, my inspiration for starting this very podcast, which is why this is so touchy and why this whole thing is so um, like viscerally um, ugh, just icky and painful. Um, because what I experienced, and, and I'll admit at the top of this, that I, I took this episode quite personally, and this what I've experienced as a shift in, in that platform's messaging, um, because Andy Berth and Marin's work uh, was what inspired me and what gave me the language of free birth. And, and she is who I derived my definitions of free birth that then has created this incredible platform and this in, you know, amazing po- uh, podcast and, and community around it. So it, it's why this is uniquely sensitive, um, even though I don't know Marin in, in offline. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little... It's a little funky. So what we're going to attempt to do today is in not in any way attack or uh, uh, discredit her or her work, but rather to have a what I actually think is a very sisterly um, uh, experience to respond and to and to really uh, disagree, but respectfully disagree. Um, I also want to add that I did invite her to come be a part of this conversation. Uh, she declined. But it was short notice, to be fair. So um, who knows what will happen in the future? I am potentially open to more conversation. Um, but yeah, so with that, I don't know. I'm going to send it over to my guests here and, and see if they want to add anything else because I got all like weird and flustered <laughs> at the top of this. So um, yeah, I want to just in- welcome the four women that I have here. I have Heather, Jonea, Claire, and Yolanda, um, and I'm just going to send it around to them to uh, introduce themselves briefly and also to use this little intro as a, as a quick way to articulate uh, what your relationship is to free birth. Uh, we are going to get into a group conversation about what free birth is and defining it and all of that, but I'd love to to hear your introduction of, of what your relationship is to it. So let's start with you, Heather. Um, I'm Heather. I, uh, I have had three free births personally, um, and one birth with a licensed midwife, um, all for really different reasons. And so I'm excited to get into conversation around this idea that there are valid and invalid reasons for women choosing to free birth. Um, one of my free births felt very forced, like I had no other options, um, and was still totally transformative. Uh, one was a really last minute following of like my heart's calling. And, um, another was a very intentional, long planned, uh, normal part of my life. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to delve into this idea that, um, anything about the reasons why we choose to birth the way we do somehow changes the incredible transformative power of women just actually birthing in alignment with our, our mammalian blueprint. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Let's go to you, Jonia. Um, so I'm Joe, and um, I have had one free birth, my third baby. Um, the reason why I chose to free birth him uh, is different from what led me to free birth. Um, I got introduced to the idea of um, an unassisted birth when I was desperately trying to have a home birth with a midwife that I couldn't afford. Um, so being in the middle of nursing school and all of our money going to childcare, I just couldn't make it happen. So somebody suggested free birth to me. Um, and as I witnessed other women having these undisturbed births, I realized that's what I was, that's what I wanted. And, um, I realized 
for me to have that free birth or undisturbed birth, I needed to birth alone with only my family. So free birth to me just means birth without anyone present who could challenge my authority in my birth space. Thank you. Claire? Hi, I'm Claire. Um, I uh, recently free birthed my first child um, this past spring. Um, I chose free birth. Um, I mean, I always knew that I didn't want to give birth in a hospital. And then somehow I happened to find a uh, free birth and um, the free birth society. And I listened to the podcast and I knew that that was what I wanted to do. Um, it wasn't an easy decision. I felt like uh, making the choice to free birth was a choice that I had to make over and over and over again throughout my pregnancy. Um, and I did, uh, when I did give birth, I had a radical birth keeper who was present um, during the birth. For me, free birth is... Um, birth without a medical professional present. Um, um, I mean, somebody might look at my free birth and say that it wasn't a free birth. It doesn't really matter to me because um, I had the birth that I wanted and it was an undisturbed birth, uh, but I, I do consider it a free birth. Awesome. Thank you. Yolanda? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So um, free birth to me really just means uh, the choice to give birth outside of institutional structures and in the absence of formal or paid birth support. That's my own personal definition. And it's a distinction that I make because I had the amazing and wonderful support of a traditional birth attendant during my first two births. And then I had six subsequent free births that involved just my immediate family and um, informal, untrained friends present. Um, and uh, I've also worked for almost a decade as a traditional birth attendant myself. And so I've seen and experienced and participated in quite a variety of approaches to birth. And I, I think free birth is a unique and, and valid path. Um, and it's also very subjective. It's, it's a subjective and ambiguous definition, um, just like the word midwifery. Um, and I think that that's okay. And I think it's really wonderful and interesting that um, uh, free birth has attracted so many women who, who share similar values as well as a variety of experiences. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So those are the women that we have here, some of whom have been on the podcast before and shared their stories. So you can go check those out. Um, and all right, let's get started. So I hope this is clear. It's just going to be an informal conversation with the five of us. Um, oh, I guess I should mention, obviously, you guys all know who I am, but I, I wanted to add that um, for anyone who maybe hasn't heard my birth story, which is on the first season, um, that, you know, I say, I claim that I had a free birth. Uh, and maybe some people disagree with that. I certainly have seen people try to discredit uh, what I'm doing because you know, if you've heard the episode and, and if you haven't, I'll let you know, uh, at hour 48, I chose to go into the hospital and I, I asked for a vaginal exam. I had made up a story that perhaps my cervix was swollen and, uh, I got an exam and they affirmed, uh, that it, or they confirmed that it wasn't, uh, and I chose to go home and went home and, and had my baby. Um, I was witnessed by my husband and uh, to my sister and my my friend, uh, both the women had been to birth before. Uh, so what does that mean? You know, I to me uh, it felt like a free birth because it felt um, like I was the authority. It was unmanaged by any medical provider, and yes, I I did choose to use the system at a time when I was actually in transition, and I learned a lot, and I love my birth story and. Uh, you know, I, I very, very willingly and vulnerably put it out as an episode um, and have been completely transparent about it because, uh, you know, so many people I have seen try to reduce our message and, and this movement and these choices as some sort of adolescent 
you know, re- rebellion and that we're anti, uh, you know, everything and that we're anti doctor and anti hospital. I am in no way anti anything. I am for women making their own goddamn choices. And that is what this whole thing is about. That is what this podcast is about. And it's why I only have free birth, free birth stories on because I'm, I'm trying to carve out a space. I'm not trying, I'm doing it. I'm carving out a space for women to celebrate and share um, the freaking challenges and victory of exercising their own authority, which I 100% did in my birth. You know, would I have gone to the hospital if Yolanda was with me? No, probably not. I probably wouldn't have. Um, and that's part of the, the nuance, you know, and, and the interesting element of this conversation um, that I absolutely want to get into as a response to, to Marin's episode, um, which we'll, we'll get to in a minute. So anyway, I just wanted to add that little, little tidbit there. Um, and I love that even in these introductions, you know, Claire had a, um, had a, a radical birth keeper with her that I assume she paid and says she has a free birth. Yolanda, by definition, would say that that's not a free birth, you know, because it was paid. I went to the hospital and came home. Uh, you know, I love it that already right here, here we are all kind of carrying our own, you know, our own definition of something that is so deeply personal and so individual and subjective. Um, and I love that. And it gets to be that. So I just want to say that at the top. Okay. So with that, let's get into this and see where this goes. Um, I'd love to pass it over to Yolanda here to give us a little, um, a little description of this concept of, of the straw man fallacy as, as that is one of our big judgment judgments about this episode. Yeah, so I think what um, what we've all what we're kind of speaking to in general about this particular episode is that so much of what Marin has to say about free birth seems to be kind of premised on a number of assumptions about what what free birth is or about how it's characterized and how it's sort of treated by this sort of the free birth community that, that Marin references many times. And um, it's hard not to, not to think that, that she's, she's referring to, to the community that that we're a part of. Um, uh, She makes a number of, of, of points that, that seem very personal, that seem to be um, pointing directly to, to, to us. Um, And what we all noticed about that is that, yeah, these assumptions uh, don't, strike us as, as being true. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about this concept called, um, the straw man, uh, fallacies. So, uh, a straw man is, is a, it's a rhetorical device, a rhetorical fallacy that involves kind of building this sort of hefty, elaborate, or apparently convincing kind of made up argument, the straw man against your opponent. Um, and, you know, I, I, none of us see, see Marin as an opponent. Um, and I think that's also why uh, her episode uh, struck so very tenderly. Um, uh, and that's, you know, because, you know, for me, and I, I know for, for a lot of other women, um, I've always seen Marin as a, um, as a, a comrade, you know, as a sister in this, in this larger kind of birth world. Um, but, you know, the, the straw man is, is essentially a way of, of misrepresenting um, the other person or the other group's position, but also of kind of derailing the discussion by focusing the discussion on kind of this, this deceit, this fabrication. Um, uh, so, you know, focusing on something that your opponent never actually said or never actually claimed so that the energy of, of the debate or the discussion is kind of uh, centered on this, this pretense of who or what you've made your, um, the, other, the other person or the other party out to be rather than on the actual merits or detriments of their position. So um, it's kind of a, it's a very disingenuous move and it's, I think, um, often designed to discredit um, the other person or the other party right at the gate. And, and that seemed, that it struck me that that's sort of what, what Marin's podcast was, was doing in a sense, because she talks about, um, you know, a lot of ideas and, and notions and, you know, positions that I've never come across in the free birth community. Um, and, uh, 
Yeah. So maybe thank you. Can. Yeah. Right. For example, saying that the movement is very patriarchal, that it's become so male, which I have no idea what that means, um, that it's rigid, that it's black or white, that it's anti, um, that that nobody is uh, n- nobody's talking about the risks, that everything's going to always happen great. I mean, just stuff that I've never, I've never encountered, um, particularly the conversation around you know, the labeling and the, the blindly following the movement that, that women are just after the label, not the experience, which is really quite contradictory to anything I've ever witnessed. Yeah. I mean, the, the idea that, um, the free birth movement, you know, whatever that is, if she's referring to, to, you know, our community in particular or free birth as a, as a larger social movement, I'm not sure, but the idea that, that, that free birth of the free birth community is, is very patriarchal and very male is just, it's such a strange um, reversal. And actually the, the, the term, the patriarchal reversal is an idea that um, feminist Mary Daly um, wrote about and talked about. And that's when, you know, someone flips the script in order to frame um, an oppressed group or, you know, a marginal group as the oppressor. Uh, so, you know, free birth is such a tiny, tiny, tiny subset of the birth community. Um, and, you know, the fact is that free birth happens when women choose to remove themselves from the dominant power structure that, you know, dictates and defines how birth will go within the institution, whether that's obstetrics or midwifery. So suggesting that it's the free birth movement itself that is patriarchal and male is just such a bizarre projection. And, you know, again, I find it very disingenuous and, and very dishonest and and almost aggressively deceitful. Um, and I also think it's a very blatant display of internalized misogyny. Um, you know, the free birth movement and the free birth community stands so emphatically and inarguably for women's autonomy and liberation from patriarchal birth structures. So for Mirren to make that uh, reversal is was just very shocking to me, actually. Yeah, I'm actually quite confused by this resistance around simply creating a definition around what free birth is. Right. Um, (laughs) You know, and I think like if it helps to give an example, like I think, um, you know, we, we don't put these same parameters, like, you know, that there's no nuance, there's no colors, women are just traumatized or it's unhealthy or patriarchal for, women to choose to birth in a birth center. And that means something very specific and it's different than free birth or cesarean surgery or any other birth choice. And to say that free birth means physiological birth at home without a professional birth attendant isn't charged in and of itself. Like having clarity around that helps us to define what we want and give women choice and I, I find it like very gaslighting and like nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense to say that different birth experiences can't have concrete definitions. Mm-hmm. I don't right to say to to tell a woman that a birth center birth is the same as free birth and and to say different is patriarchal is is just not true. It's especially strange since. I got my definition from her directly, like from the Taking Back podcast, which is why this whole thing is is particularly unique that I thought she was different. I thought that she was a different kind of midwife than the ones that I've been critiquing. There's also the sense of sort of almost accusation around this idea that you know, we're just obsessed with these labels and, mm-hmm. you know, we're just drawn to, you know, make these weird birth choices so that we can, um, you know, acquire the label. And I've never observed that ever. Um, I really couldn't care less about whether or not someone has a free birth or not. I don't think anyone really could. Uh, we've just been attracted to each other because we've made similar choices. I mean, that's kind of what the free birth community is about. And, um, 
you know, I think there's a distinction to be made between a label and just a word that right. describes something, you know? Um, and yes, for, there's, there's a lot of ambiguity when it comes to what free birth means. And yes, some people have different definitions, um, you know, themselves in terms of the granular differentiation. But there's a similar ambiguity when it comes to what the word midwife means. There's a similar ambiguity when it comes to, you know, I mean, Emily and you and I were talking earlier, like, does a woman who gives birth in a hotel room, can she call that a home birth? I mean, of course she can, or she may not. It doesn't really matter, but it's nice to use words to describe our experiences. And that's what I use the word free birth to, to to talk about just the choices that we've made during birth. It, it uh, as you said, Heather. You know, I, I'm not really, I I actually am not really understanding why there's such a like a political charge to this concept of free birth, and I can't help but think that there's, you know, some fear and defensiveness on the part of those who are, you know, expressing this sort of like concern trolling kind of energy around it or you know the policing of this language or Mm -hmm. um yeah it's very strange Mm -hmm. claire um yeah no i wanted to say something about um i guess some of the so like so there's the the whole thing about defining what free birth is um and also uh, talking about free birth as a movement, and I was, I was wondering. I'm like, well, is this a movement or is it um, uh, more of a subculture? Um, I mean, just because I mean, as a movement, I started to try to look up definitions, and some people might say a movement is, you know, if you have like some type of political agenda where you're trying to change certain laws. I don't think that we're trying to change any laws, so I'm not really sure if movement is the appropriate word, but um, and and looking at it. But looking at it as a subculture um, and just kind of observing, you know, just the way that different people might define free birth. It's not like there because there is no like one authority who says this is free birth. The end. It's like it's a movement. It's created from from the women who are involved, which is why there is no just one concrete definition of what free birth and the the definition of free birth is really like really secondary or maybe even beyond that you know what is important is that women are making you know they're that they're birthing autonomously that they're making choices about how they're treated and their bodies are treated and their babies are treated and you know the pregnancy and birth and postpartum that's the whole point (laughs) right obviously and that the that for many women that free birth that is what they found to be the way to achieve that the best. I mean, that was what kind of blew my mind about the episode was, well, many things did, but that there was no real acknowledgement of this blindingly obvious element, you know, that women, not all women, some women just choose free birth because they don't want anyone else but their family there. And that's great and valid. And and I would say that more than that, in my experience, more often uh, women are dealing with what they have available. Right. And most women, unfortunately, today do not have, you know, an accessible, wise woman that is so familiar with birth and and is such a um, safe and respectful, you know, servant to a woman's process that she can be called on, you know, and brought into this space. Like that is not available to almost everybody. And that's so great that it was available for Marin as she, as she lets us know in her, in her episode, that is so beautiful. And what an example, you know, for us to work towards. That's so beautiful. And obviously we know that, that, um, they're, they're training independent midwives. That's so great. Um, and for the vast majority of women, truly authentic midwives are not available to them. And so free birth is an an incredible, powerful alternative option. And it's just so weird that that never even got like brought together, you know, seen as like either or it's, it's, it's all a part of the same like tree, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know the right analogy. Like it's all a part of the same cycle to have, and many women like Yolanda is such a good example, was lucky enough to find an incredible traditional birth attendant. And then 
didn't need her, you know, after her two births or, or maybe needs the wrong word, but chose to go on and have family births. And what a beautiful evolution of that. Sister Morningstar talks about that so beautifully as well of, you know, women that she attends with their first or their second by their third, she doesn't get called anymore. That's so beautiful. It's all a part of the same garden that we're all trying to, to grow from. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Emily and and um, you know I just wanted to say as well that uh, I do have a, a specific um, you know my own definition of of what I think free birth means and you know that like I said before that comes from my own experiences as a mother and as a a birth attendant and you know, I was mentioning this earlier that um, when I witness a birth and you know, I check in with the family a couple of days later and they've shared with their whole network and community that they had this amazing, beautiful free birth. Um, I feel so honored and I, I just feel so, um, I feel like I've done my job as, as a birth witness in, um, you know, ensuring that I was as, um, kind of absent from from the picture as I could be so much so that you know this this woman perceives that that she had a free birth and I think that's wonderful and and you know she owns that completely and I probably wouldn't describe her birth myself as a free birth but it's not my business you know how another woman um sees her birth experience um and I loved what you said Claire about uh the difference between um a movement and a subculture. And I've never thought of that before. And I think that's, it's just so, so important. I'm, I love that you brought that up. And I realized just, I realized when you were speaking that um, I actually experienced free birth um, or, or birth in general in, in both ways. So yes, I feel like free birth is primarily a subculture and, and not a movement as you've described it. But I'm also involved in birth myself as kind of an activist. So I feel like I kind of occupy both of those spaces. So there's just such a multiplicity of um, ways to engage with birth and, and free birth is, is, is the same. And I just, you know, I think one of the things in, in the podcast that we're discussing that, that really um, struck me was just this sort of um, repeated assessment of the free birth community as, you know, rigid and black and white and no nuance and, and, that just could not be further from the truth. So I, I'm, I was so curious as I was listening to Marin's podcast as to where she got this from. Like, where did this idea come from that free birth is so rigid and black and white? Because that's definitely not ever been my experience. And, you know, I think we're all kind of attesting to that here. Jonea, what are you thinking? Um, I was really struck by the whole trend statement, um, but I, but also I guess kind of not surprised. I feel like there have been a couple of things that Indie Birth has put out recently that have been a real disservice to women of color, or maybe just like a disregard for minority and underprivileged women. First, by having you know a white male OB on their podcast and. He he shared some disturbing beliefs about birth, and then uh, having that same OB go on to teach um, in their midwifery school, I actually found that to be frightening. Uh, the last thing that Black women need are white male OBs in their birth space, whether that's physically present or just present in the indoctrination of the midwives who are then going to go out and serve our community. Mm-hmm. Um, but to speak to this most recent podcast, there were a few statements that were were made that I found particularly alarming. Uh, I mean, black women are dying. You know, we're three times more likely to die during childbirth than our white sisters, and this is not genetic. This is the result of systemic racism. And if you're a woman of color, these statistics apply to you, and that is terrifying. So there, there is some fear there. We're not just being abused and traumatized, we're being killed. You know, we're losing our lives, our babies, our mothers and sisters and aunts. And to tell these women that are witnessing this abuse or being traumatized by this system that choose free birth, that they're making like an unhealthy decision based off of the trauma they've endured or witnessed, 
is absurd. It's the exact opposite of unhealthy. Recognizing your oppressor, your abuser, fleeing from the system that's killing you and your sisters is the most powerful, intuitive, and responsible decision that anyone can make. And to go on and make these overgeneralized statements or assumptions that these women could possibly be subscribing to some dogma or trying to have a trendy birth is not only highly offensive, it's dripping with privilege. Trying to survive birth has nothing to do with with chasing the new thing with the shiny paper. I, I'm just mind blown that that anyone could say these things i i'm just i think it's it's reckless to to make these statements with this this type of platform with this following when you're a birth keeper and i mean these aren't new statistics this is this is very well known any birth worker that i've ever talked to you know this is in their consciousness this increased mortality rate for women of color so i i don't understand how someone can make these statements and and not consider this entire demographic of women. <sighs> um, but I, but even so, I mean, if they're birthing in fear and alone or they're, they're witnessed and fearless, I mean, it's still objectively healthier and safer for this demographic right. of women to choose free birth. And it has, you know, absolutely nothing to do with with trying to have a, a trendy birth or, or a title or a label. It's it's just simply trying to survive. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that share. And and yeah, I mean that was part of what what she said was trauma wasn't a, a good enough reason for free birth. But yes it is. <laughs> it's like the same <laughs> like the smartest. I mean, it makes so much sense. And so many women choose free birth because they've seen what the system had, or they've heard stories, or they've witnessed, or they understand the disparities in the system, all of this. And then they make, like you said, an intelligent, safe decision to do it in a different way. It's the it's right. such a valid choice. Totally. And I mean, I, I do... I do know and believe that women are choosing to free birth out of fear, but the women that I know, the women that we're in community with work through those fears, go on to have powerful, life-changing, paradigm-shifting births, are fully capable and willing to take responsibility for those births. And I just don't understand how, how anyone working in the birth world wouldn't see that it's like wouldn't would assume that these fears that are being you know these decisions that are being made from fear that the, that fear is not then being conquered i wanted to add that um because joe mentioned some t- statistics and in in new york city where um where where i was living when i gave birth to I went, women of color i think black women are 12 percent more likely to die. Like the statistic is even worse. And I was, and and I lived in the Bronx, which is like one of the worst places for women of color to give birth. And that's, it's primarily women of color that live in that borough. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's something very real. And I mean, I, I am a woman of color. I don't look it necessarily, but that's still something I'm, I'm Puerto Rican and I could, I guess I'm white passing. Um, but it's still something that I took into account when I would go, you know, whenever I would go into the hospital, it's just like, how am I going to be treated? You know? Um, yeah. It's a very, very real thing. Yeah. I want to throw a quote in here to what we're talking about. Something that she shared on the episode was, can we be honest about our own trauma and our own fears and again, recalibrate what is right for you? rather than blindly following a movement because it absolves you of having to work out your fears. Cool. Yeah, Joe and Clara, thank you so much for sharing all of that. So like beautifully and powerfully, um, I, I too am just, I'm, I'm confused by this idea that we could even escape our trauma. And that is just so 
especially true for women of color. Like we're, we are traumatized by living under white supremacy. We are all traumatized from living within patriarchy. We all have trauma from living in a very broken culture, maybe from our past experiences, maybe from our own births, but the trauma of like living under, you know, a racist patriarchal system, women can't escape that. And so to me, I don't understand how we can look at women who are able to have clarity around that and to choose to step outside of a, of a violent, oppressive system and say, hell no, I will not submit to birthing in that way or under that control. And I will do it myself, whether that's with fear or whether I've processed my trauma into some sort of holy state of purity or not. Like, we can't escape that. Like, just be embodied in that. And I... I, To me, it is so deeply misogynistic to suggest that whatever women do with where they are at in their lives right now isn't perfectly valid and good for them. Yeah. Here's another quote I want to read. There's also this fear that someone will interrupt their birth, interrupt their process. I mean, I get that, but being overly fearful of someone doing something is an interesting concept. I mean, it seems like so much of that is a, a discussion of birth, but it's really a discussion of our life. Like, how do we claim autonomy in our lives? Wouldn't it be natural if we had great ideas of undisturbed birth that we would communicate them about really creating what we want rather than just opting out of all the anti things we don't like? Okay. Hold up. How many women do we all know who go into the hospital with a birth plan and are literally laughed at? I have seen providers crumple up the birth plans in front of the laboring mother and throw them in the fucking trash. I mean, is she so out of touch that she has forgotten what's happening in the system? I have seen, I mean, even Heather's story, you know, who's on this podcast today of telling her midwife that she didn't want vaginal exams. And the first thing the midwife does when she shows up at her birth is wants to give her a vaginal exam. I hear stories of this kind of stuff, this kind of um, absolute disrespect and sabotage literally every day. So how dare she act like it's as simple as just claiming autonomy in our lives and telling our providers our dreams of undisturbed birth? How dare she? If it were that simple, (laughs) holy shit. I mean, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It is so fucking offensive that this, that to frame it, like if we could just tell our providers we wanted an undisturbed birth, that that's what would happen, that we just have to take responsibility for communicating. I mean, that just speaks volumes of how out of touch she is. Overly fearful? What is overly? I am definitely fearful. And I am a white privileged woman who knows the system pretty darn well. And I'm definitely fearful. Oh my God. Because I know what happens. I've seen hundreds of births in this system. It terrifies me. Truly. I don't say that lightly. It terrifies me what I have witnessed. The abuse and the rape and the just absolute violence that I have witnessed again and again and again will haunt me the rest of my life. I'm absolutely fearful. And I also birthed in power as everyone on this podcast did, as so many women do in our, in our um, community. You know, it's, it's so beautiful to be afraid of something and choose a different path, right? Like I didn't make my choice to free birth in fear. My choice to birth at home actually in a way had nothing to do with the system. It felt just totally normal. Like, of course I was going to just have my baby at home with my family present. That, that in and of itself actually felt completely natural and normal. Just the fact that it's, you know, socially assumed and obviously the mainstream by the vast majority to not do that 
um, then okay, you can bring in like my fear of the system and why I'm choosing not to do the mainstream thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, Joe and Claire just articulated it so well from a woman of color perspective, which is even um, more uh, scary. And yet it is all women who are being violated, all women, you know, and that doesn't mean that, okay, if you had a hospital birth and you don't feel violated, that's, that's, oh my God, that's so wonderful. And fuck yeah. (laughs) I wish, I wish that I heard it more often. You know, I'm sure somebody will hear this and feels like they weren't violated in their birth at the hospital. And that is so great. And I wish that was the norm and it's not. And so, yeah, anyway, just this, this constant invalidation through this episode, um, as if fear wasn't a perfectly valid reason to not go do something. Like I'm afraid of walking alone at night in a city, right? Like, and so I'm not going to do it because I'm afraid of it because of what so often has happened to the women I know, for example, anyway. Yeah, I mean, trusting women and respecting women, which is, you know, the I think the foundation of of our shared philosophy here. I hope uh, that means that any choice we make for any reason is completely valid. We are adults, and if we make a choice out of fear, that's valid, and and, and it's valid to make a choice for any other reason. I, I just think there's so much condescension mm-hmm. and dismissal in this idea that, well, you know, there are some women who are making these choices, you know, for the wrong reasons. It's it's so condescending. Well, I mean, she fully calls free birth the shiny paper, the 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 new shiny thing with the shiny paper, and says that women are blindly following this movement. So that right there outs her that she doesn't actually trust women. Because if you do trust women, you can't also basically make fun of women who are choosing free birth. I think out of touch is the great word for it. And I felt like so many of the statements in that podcast were really coming from a place of privilege and and like not taking off your blinders and being like, actually, everyone doesn't live like me. I like everyone doesn't have the privileges that I have. You know, the women that I'm serving probably aren't the minority underprivileged women of color who who literally are being killed in the system and who are choosing to free birth so that they can survive or give themselves the best chance of survival. So I I'm I'm just really saddened and and yeah like heartbroken that somebody of this you know quote unquote caliber or you know this type of midwife who who sells themselves as this person is making statements like this without really thinking about who she's talking to. Like all women, that includes minority and underprivileged women. I'd I'd like to bring up um, what Marin also mentioned in the podcast about um, kind of issues of, of, of safety and this sort of insinuation that in the free birth community, we, uh, you know, discount, um, the the seriousness of birth we um you know maybe don't acknowledge um fully the the risks involved in birth and i think that's another um another straw man <laughs> argument really because it's definitely definitely not the case um in my experience anyway i think there are uh, you know, my observation is that um, women who are considering or choosing free birth are exceptionally and exquisitely aware of the risk. I'm just reading over some of these quotes here. I, like, it's so much to take in. It's crazy because I have read the skeptical OB say stuff like this, who's like the Voldemort of birth, you know, <laughs> like it's... It's really baffling. I mean, and to the point of why we needed to do this episode, because, you know, we, we need to speak the truth to the women that are listening. And I don't give a fuck about a label. I want to look at a woman and have her tell me her birth story. And I want her to tell me that she got the support she wanted, you know, that she got to actualize her birth dream, that she had nobody sabotage her, that she got to experience what was important to her, you know? I mean, and I understand that there are women who have that about birthing in the system and that's so great for them. I'm specifically talking about women who are, who are committed 
to knowing physiological undisturbed birth and to knowing and to not having anyone take that away. Can that happen with a midwife? Of course, of course it can, but it's few and far between. And so, (laughs) God, it's just like baffling. (laughs) Yeah. Like the irony too of, of, of this entire podcast that really throws free birth and free birthing women under the bus um, in the face of this overwhelming body of evidence, Emily, that is your podcast, right. which is just story yeah. after story, hundreds and hundreds of women who have had these mer- uh, just transformative, blissful, amazing, powerful experiences that are just, it, that, that's inarguable as well. Um, not to mention the women who have yet to be on your podcast who are part of the free birth community. Um, and what I find so inspiring and so beautiful about, um, you know, free birth society in particular, um, your free birth community in particular, and, you know, there are several, but certainly you're the most prominent leader of the free birth community. Uh, what I find so inspiring about it is that we see not only women who are taking birth into their own hands, literally, but women who are standing up to, volunteer their time and their support. We see networks growing. We see women growing into becoming radical birth keepers themselves. We see women, um, you know, being spontaneously called by their communities to support other women. Like this is a, um, a, a, a subculture, Claire, but maybe also a movement now that I think about it more too, because, you know, here are these women, like we're, we're creating mm-hmm. such an incredible global community. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I did a chat today with a woman in Australia who it happens to live in the same area as another woman in our community who have met up and are attending each other's births. I mean, it's so beautiful. And, and right, exactly. And Claire, the woman who attended her, they met through Free Birth Society slash me saying you guys should be at each other's births. And, you know, this is, this is the, the, oh, just, Nothing makes me more hopeful than to watch the web of love and support happen within this community. It is so profoundly beautiful and it, and it's cyclical. Like, you know, yo and I were trying to articulate this before we were recording that, you know, this whole like weird reduction that, that free birth is somehow different or I don't know, whatever, just the whole, the whole thing, the whole, the whole, um, attempt at throwing us under the bus in this episode, what it brought out was a great conversation that Yolanda and I were having earlier today about um, this kind of cycle of, okay, midwifery's dead. Like that, go look at Yolanda's (laughs) post that she posted. Midwifery is completely dead. We've accepted that. And so now what? And so all of us for our own uh, reasons and our own paths have found free birth. Okay. And then you found free birth society. Okay. And then we found each other right? And so all these women are literally supporting each other in birth and they are becoming the authentic midwives that we don't have in the world anymore. And so it's this beautiful cycle where it's all connected. It's all the same thing. And Indie Birth putting out, um, you know, this, this program online, I haven't seen it. I know nothing about it other than that it exists. And fuck yeah, that's awesome. Truly. That is so awesome. Assuming that their curriculum is more integral than this episode was, then fuck yeah. Because that is what we need. We need independent midwives who are, who are coming back into the cycle of truly being with women. And we are seeing it in our own microclimate and it is happening and it is so profoundly beautiful. And so it is in no way like, oh, there's free birth over here and it's a club. And if you don't free birth, you're not allowed to be a part of it and you need the label. I mean, that is so just bizarre and such a gross interpretation or mis- misrepresentation of the absolute sheer profound power and beauty of women claiming their lives and claiming their births and finding community within that, which is what free birth society is. Yeah, exactly. I, I just want to say just quickly for the record, because I'm worried that this is going to be completely misconstrued. I did just make a post on Instagram stating, um, <laughs> quite radically that midwifery is dead. And I, I have to clarify that I don't in any way believe that the work of authentic midwifery right. is dead. It's just that those words, and it's this is a similar conversation to the free birth issue, those words have become so muddied by um, you know, institutional um, control and you know, patriarchal forces uh, that 
you know, it, it, it no longer means, the, the, the term midwife no longer means a woman called by her community to step forth and to serve her sisters in birth. And that, to me, is what midwifery should mean. Um, but it really doesn't anymore. It, it has become a term that signals someone who has been trained you know, by doctors in a hospital setting, in a clinical environment, to approach birth from a highly medicalized perspective. And, you know, it's, it's a, a, a drastic bait and switch because, um, you know, there are still some women who hear the word midwife and think that it's going to be, you know, this sort of holistic experience. Although more and more people are now associating the word, the word midwife with, you know, the nursing profession. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean when I say midwifery is dead. It's not that, um, you know, authentic service um, among women is it's it's still it's still there. Um we just have to use different terms. And so yeah, the cycle continues and here well, we are. We don't but- we don't have to use different terms, but using the term that's been co-opted by our governments is actually dangerous. Exactly. It's actually illegal for right. women called to serve other women um in a grassroots fashion. It's illegal for them to call themselves midwives. And so, you know, that's another aspect of of you know Marin's project that um I think is very uh interesting and and tricky to navigate because like you said Emily I I actually I really care about Marin I've I've considered her a friend and a sister for a long time and I really deeply respect the work that she does I've always respected her as um, a birth worker uh, profoundly and uh, I think it's interesting though that she is um, offering this this school this educational experience to train midwives but that all across North America, in fact, it's not legal for women to call themselves that. So I guess my overall point here is just that um, there is a lot of confusion entirely all all over the world of birth, free birth, midwifery. um, There's so much confusion, so much ambiguity. And I think that, you know, we do well to give each other some grace and um, just to... (laughs) not be jerks about it. <laughs> yeah, that was one thing that really struck me listening to the episode to um to to borrow a phrase that you use a lot Emily. I I just kept thinking that it was really reflective of this like scarcity mindset where we almost need to convince women mm-hmm. that, you know, they need midwives and I just don't believe that we do. There are always, always going to be women who want women to sit with them at birth. So instead of trying to convince women that they need that, we we can be those women. Let's mm-hmm. become those women. Let's support one another in, in creating those women in our communities. And uh, to be honest, a big part of that will be dismantling this idea of quote unquote professionalized midwifery and recognizing that 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 woman to provide I loved that so much of, of that that Marin talked about in the podcast of this idea of a witness, and I have felt that so deeply in my own births and especially in my postpartum times like this deep desire to have women around me who get it and who can, you know, just create this, this circle of reverence around my work as a birthing woman and a new mother. I think we all really want that. And that doesn't have to be a midwife who knows how to use a Doppler and carries Pitocin or even has ever been to a birth, you know, that, that can look like so many different iterations Uh of just wise women being sisterly to one another. And yeah, I think um, we have to trust that there's space for all of us, you Uh know? Totally. Yeah. Um, I felt like in, during the episode, something else that's, that struck me was how she continued to bring up her 10 years of experience and and how women go to her and ask, I want to have a free birth. How can I know all the things? And she says, well, you can't know all the things and, and then calls women arrogant and then immediately says that's so male. <laughs> I mean, calling women arrogant for wanting to sit at your feet and learn what they can do for themselves. I, I, like 
the conversation was so like not coherent and I, I was really confused at what the motivation or the, the reason for saying some of these things were if they weren't something deeply personal that, that was just kind of being vented and, and ranted. And, and again, like you can't do that. You, I mean, you can, but I mean, think about your audience and who you're speaking to. You can't be so reckless with saying these things. I mean, she, it was a free birth podcast. I found it. It's called Taking Back Birth. The whole right. first beginning episodes when I listened to it was all about doing your own prenatal care and like demystifying all the systemic bullshit of birth and, and taking it into your own hands. So then to also say that you, that you don't have 10 years of experience and it's arrogant to think you can learn all the things is completely contradictory to everything that I have witnessed her stand for. So it, it's super just <laughs> disheartening. The, the core is that most women don't need 10 years of midwifery experience to birth. And so if that's who you want to be is the expert and the, the, the authority, the hero, then be that and trust that the women who actually need that will find you. That's not going to be all women and that you don't need to manage which women that's going to be. We can trust women to discern that for themselves. Yeah. Um, also about the, the knowing all of the all of the things that there is to know. Um, I just I was wondering who knows all of the things that there is to know about birth because I feel like doctors think OBs think they know all there is to know. What they would say that we don't know anything, but we know things that they don't know. And a traditional midwife, you know, like everybody knows something different and there always could be something that you've never encountered before, no matter what, where you're coming from, you know, what perspective you're coming from. So I thought that was, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah. And, and Heather, I want to go back to what you were talking about, about loving the, the part she was talking about with the witnessing. And yes, of course, the vast majority of women I've ever met want to be witnessed and held I can really only think of a couple of women who chose to do it totally alone and had other options. Because I know plenty of women who've done it alone, unfortunately, and it wasn't what they wanted. You know, I know, I know women, I mean, some of them have been on the podcast. I know women in the Middle East, you know, that, that have birthed at home and, and lied, you know, and acted like they were going out and they stayed home when they felt labor. I mean, I, I've just heard uh, crazy, wild, and, and really quite painful stories of, of the ways that women have manipulated their environment and their family or their, you know, oppressive partners or whatever to manipulate the situation so that they could birth at home in the way that they felt was right for them. Um, and so, None of that is really what we're talking about. Like women, most women want to be witnessed. And like we already covered, that's not super available. You know, we always, you know, in our community, we're always hearing about women with the super judgy mom or the mother-in-law or all the people who think they want to come and nobody gets it. And how do I tell my family? And how do I get my partner on board? And how, you know, how do women navigate what is usually a very difficult choice. And so, you know, again, like what Joe was saying, I mean, to reduce this to a trend when it's so, so hard and it will, it will really, you know, like we say in the course, it's, it's a true litmus test of who truly respects you and who truly has your back and who truly trusts you. Um, kind of like this episode kind of outed herself as a litmus test in and of itself, because, this is a very challenging thing to kind of come out about for most women, right? Like it's pretty rare that no women, that women get no flack for this and get no questioning and get total support. Um, it's pretty uncommon. Uh, I just want to, this is a, a bit of a, a subject change maybe, but I just wanted to just speak for a moment to um, the format of this discussion. And um, the fact that we are quite deliberately um, naming Indie Birth and, and talking specifically about Marin's podcast um, 
and we we had a lot of conversation back and forth about whether or not this was the appropriate approach. And you know, I think we came to the conclusion that um, it's actually far more honest and transparent to be open about this um, rather than kind of couch the discussion as you know talking about sort of a, a, a like a vague, a vague, random yeah, you know, group aggressive. out there. It, it is very passive aggressive. And so, um, you know, we wanted to not do that and to speak openly. And I, I just wanted to briefly touch on um, something that, that Marin said in the podcast, which was that, uh, and I'm quoting her here, uh, even the leaders of this movement, the free birth movement, are adding confusion. Just today, posting about having had a free birth when very clearly they said it wasn't a free birth. So what are women to do? What are women to do with this lack of honesty? So unless there's another leader of the free birth movement out there who has recently posted about her free birth with some measure of ambiguity, um, I think Marin's talking about me. I don't think I'm- Wait, but, but also add the, <laughs> the next line about unless they're incentivized because they're profiting off of the movement. Did you write that oh, part down? Was that the, the next that line? Was, yeah, because then she was like, because some people have, this is not a quote anymore, this is from my head, but unless some people have, um, are financially profiting off of standing for this movement, which is... Oh, that's interesting crazy. because I would yeah. say that we're financially profiting off of... Uh, educational products that we have spent right. hours and hours, hundreds, thousands of hours creating. Just like um, them. Just like them. So yeah, I mean, that's a very strange, uh, strange way of framing things as well. But, um, you know, I... It was obviously about you. It was obviously about me. And I was, um, I posted, I, I, I made those posts precisely because I wanted to talk about the ambiguities um, when it comes to, comes to free birth. And I wanted to discuss the fact that while, no, I did not have a midwife or a doula or a birth attendant present at my most recent birth, I nonetheless felt that, um, you know, some of the, the friends who were there ended up, despite having no experience in birth, um, acting more as birth attendants than simply as, you know, friends um, witnessing or holding space. So, uh, you know, again, um, it, it seems very... Um, uh, aggressive actually to be calling me out on um yeah you know in, in just in terms of the way that I I was framing my birth especially because I was doing so in an attempt to be open and transparent and honest and to spark a conversation about all of these you know variabilities and um kind of ephemeral aspects of the experience yeah yeah I'm not sure that I can um draw the like super clear line here. But I think one of the things that I wanted to talk about was also the, the really wide spectrum of what our community represents. And I'm not sure that that has to do specifically with free birth, but um, because I think that an individual woman doesn't necessarily need to contend with, you know, feminism or, or community or any of these issues in order to birth in her own way. But certainly when we start talking about the lack of authentic midwives and, and what it means to be a birth keeper who has really done that work, I think that it's really powerful that like, yes, our community and the women that I know are talking about free birth and all of the beautiful ways that that um, plays out and manifests in our own lives. But it's also about feminism like it's it doesn't exist in a vacuum we're all working on what it means to be in community with other women and and that's attending one another's births or or nursing each other's babies or just being willing to have very difficult confronting conversations with one another you know so that we are not um acting out in this horizontal hostility that we're having conversation, we're being open and authentic and grappling with what it means to be in sisterhood. And, and without that, you know, free birth doesn't matter and nothing matters because if women aren't working together in this kind of bigger picture, um, we're missing the point, you know? Yeah. I mean, for me, I think one of the, just overall in general, it was hurtful to 
hear this podcast because, um, yeah, I really love Marin and Margo and I, I think that what they're doing is really great. And I'm confused as to why that same gesture isn't extended to, to our project because right? we're really in this together. Like there's not really a lot of difference really right. in what totally. we're doing. And so it just makes no sense to me. Totally. Except and like not to just play on the same words and, you know, blanket statements, but I mean, it's patriarchy, right? Like we're conditioned to see one another as like being in fundamental competition and like needing to control and like, please, like, can we stop doing that? You know, I definitely what it felt like. (laughs) We're like, we're over here. Like I'm not patriarchal. You're patriarchal. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) No, but it, I mean, it did really have a flavor of competition and um, scarcity consciousness and, and this like, like there's not enough room for all of us and there absolutely is. And, you know, we don't need to get into like the history, but you know, it's felt like that from the beginning for me personally, who started this, um, you know, I've never gotten like a nod of support and it's, it's, it's sad. It's really a sad thing. And, and for me, it really weakens their message it really um, takes away, you know, if the whole platform is trust women and women own birth and, and sisterhood and all this stuff. And then a sister company comes along who's actually, actually not really quite yet in direct competition. I guess with our radical birth keeper program, you could see it that way. Um, but I don't, you know, I see it as, as this, we're, there's so few platforms of this information. Like let's get more of them out there. Let's get more like the free birth sisters on Instagram. Go follow them. If you're not yet, there's the midwitch, you know, Anita in Australia, there's so many women who are getting, you know, inspired about this and putting their content out and, and, and hopefully selling their, you know, knowledge through whatever coaching and courses. And we need more of that. We have to, it's, it's just so like, backwards and patriarchal to not be in sisterhood and, and co-support. We don't even have to like each other, but I still think we should support each other. I, I don't like a lot of women, but I definitely support them. Uh, you know, I mean, come on, let's not all act like we all like everybody. Of course we don't, but, but I support them and I respect women and I respect their choices and I trust women to make their own choices. And I, you know, like, okay, I, would obviously make a lot of different decisions than a lot of other women. I would not go get three C-sections in a row, but I would fight to my death to support a woman to make that choice. That is so important. That is so important. And I think, you know, we probably all feel that way. Because like Heather, I mean, that was your whole point, right? Like, yeah, free birth is great. You know, birthing on our own terms is great. But if we're not also applying the, the layer of sisterhood you know, that's when it becomes like a real multi-generational cultural shift, right? Not a trend, you could say. She said she was concerned for her daughters and her granddaughters because of the free birth movement. I I can't even deal. That's so bizarre. It's like when women are being maimed and tortured and raped and abused constantly in Every hospitals day. and birth centers and unfortunately, you know, mistreated by regulated midwives, Marin's concerned for her daughters when it comes to the free birth movement? I, okay. Um, okay, here's another quote. The concerning part of this movement, free birth, it's the dogma, I think. There's a way, you know, what it looks like. There's a way that it looks and how it goes. And it must receive this label or this branding or inclusion in the club of free birth. And I don't understand how this really serves women. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It's so absurd. As a whole, you know, these are, there's these black and white beliefs. Where did this free birthing thing come from that's gotten so rigid? That's so right or wrong. It's so male, so completely a product of the patriarchy that it's ironic. It's ironic to me that a movement essentially built by women that were unhappy with the dogma of one method has completely swung the other way. Okay. First thing I need to say, free birth is the original birth. Okay. Just birth. Free birth is just birth. So the fact that it has gotten like taken and, and, and all, you know, everything that everyone already knows, if you listen to this podcast, is such an absurd thing to say as an independent midwife, no less, you know, and as a free birther, no less, right? She free births or did whatever. Now she has Margo there, whatever, but 
she free birth, apparently the right way, but that it's so completely ironic to her that a movement was built from women that were unhappy with the dogma of one method. No, women have always and will always protect and claim normal birth. There will always be women everywhere, somewhere doing it. That, that has never gotten completely erased and it won't and it can't because as we all know, physiological birth happens accidentally at home, even if the, you know, even if the mother intended to go to the hospital, right? That we know that this happens everywhere all the time because duh. And so it's just so, it's so crazy. It's like, who, <laughs> who are these people believing this that are also going around saying that they're taking back birth and to trust women and that women own birth. If women own birth, then you cannot say that free birth is dogmatic. I was wondering. I was wondering what the um, what exactly the dogma is, because she used that word so much. And so I looked. I'm like, okay, so what's dogma? So according to the internet, a principle or a set of principles laid down by an authority or as incon- incontrovertibly true. So, I, so I'm what other? I'm wondering what the set of principles are and who's the authority on those principles. And if and if there's even dogma in. I don't know if I would call it dogma for a hospital birth. I don't I don't know that I would call that dogma either. I don't know. Yeah. I was just confused by the words. Well, when you frame chosen. when you frame free birth society as a cult and the women are being brainwashed, which many, many, many people have done, at least five. I'm not gonna give them too many credits. You know, there's there's the shit talkers out there. Um, not Marin. Marin did not call me a cult or, or brainwashing. But you know, if you frame free birth society, let's say because it's a community that's circling around uh, a value system, then you can easily label women circling around a, a principle, you know, shared value system as a cult, right? Mm. And so then that would make me the authority. Slash, you know, Yolanda can have some cred there. I'm the Sheila. You're my <laughs> Sheila. I'll be the Osho. And, you know, like, I, it's like so offensive to see how this gets, you know, because I what have a podcast because I bought a proprietary network and I'm like creating this container for women to feel safe where they can fucking talk that it can somehow be misconstrued as a cult leader. I mean, here's the best part, right? At the end, she makes a plea to her listeners to not sell out to the free birth, free birth people. You can't birth autonomously and sell out. You can't do both things. So whatever that means isn't actually applicable because you can't sell out to the free birth people if free birth fundamentally means radical self-responsibility. Fuck. (laughs) Mic drop. (laughs) And again, she never said outright that I was a cold leader or brainwashed, blah, blah, blah. But plenty of people have and, you know, all those nasty articles that came out. And it's like a fun way to make fun of me. Um, but, but please, please do not give me that much power. My God, I don't want it. That's insane. And right, Claire, who's the authority? If you're going to call this dogma, then that implies that there's an authority. And, it, and then that authority would obviously be me, which I don't want that. I'm not speaking for that. That's not, you know, being a leader of a community doesn't give that, that doesn't equal, um, you know, that everyone is like following my, whatever my dogma. I mean, it's just such a, a shitty way to, to, to misrepresent this beautiful thing. Like most communities have leaders, right? I mean, it's like somebody had to build it. Right. And it's, it's obviously more than just me now. And it's just, uh, you know, of course, Probably she's going to say I'm taking this way too personal, but I am. I am taking this personal. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's also like that's totally related to the quote that you just gave, right? right? Where like this idea that free birth is this, you know, that she's offering it as this reduction of like the wide diversity of women who choose to birth on their own terms for whatever reason, like is so misogynistic to suggest that women are doing that simply to follow a fad or a trend or you or Facebook or literally anything like, or her, you know, it's like women are, first of all, like you said, it's just free birth is just birth. Like (laughs) 
it just completely erases that this is just normal, beautiful, ecstatic, primal, raw, messy birth. That like, is our birthright to choose and protect and actualize. It is already ours. It is every single woman on this planet with reproductive abilities. It is her birthright to make this choice should it be good for her or tr- you know, true for her. It's not this like club over here that you have to do shit to be a part of. And it's not new. And, it, and women right. choosing it is not reactionary. It's like basic humanity. It's, it's basic humanity. I don't get any like street cred for like having a free birth. I mean, I don't, I don't even really like to tell people. Um, I feel like some other, like my mother loves selling people and I'm just like, Ma, like she, which is really, it's cute. It's nice that she's so proud of me. Um, but yeah, I, I, because I, I don't know how other people will take it or if they'll take it as a judgment on themselves. It's not the shiny new thing. Cause it's not something that's easy to just, well, at least for me, it's not just easy to share with people because, you know, I wonder how it's going to be perceived, even though that's really like not my responsibility. I but that's I exactly why yeah. we need a community around it. That's what yeah. part of what makes our space so special that women are posting their naked photos of catching their babies and they can scream it from the rooftops in our space. That's so special. I mean, my God, I, I so fiercely love and, and, and will protect that because it's, like you said, it's not something we can really do. A woman in our group just the other day tried to do it on Facebook and got annihilated. Her birth, her birth. She's a couple days postpartum and she shared that she free birthed and got annihilated and questioned and criticized and fear mongered. And that we created a space where that won't happen. Yeah, it was only the only place that I felt that I could post a picture and say, I did that shit, you know, like I was like, I did that, you know, and everybody, I didn't have to worry about who was going to perceive it or take it the wrong way. Everybody, we could all celebrate that another woman was able to have the birth that she, you know, this beautiful, powerful birth. Exactly. Yeah, and how not, fucking and beautiful. Not, right. And not everyone in our space has free birthed. You know, I mean, I, there are women in the group that have had C-sections and are done having children. And, and how beautiful that they feel called to be in this community. You know, how special and how important. There's women in the group who don't want kids. You know, there's elders. There's, there's, there's all sorts of women coming at this from all different angles. And that's why, you know, the shared values is bigger than free birth. It is feminism. It is autonomy. It is exercising our birthright and our self-authority. And it is in creating spaces of integrity, which is almost impossible online and we did it so how dare anyone call it a cult <laughs> yeah it, it's so true i mean she didn't just offend you as as this leader you know in our community who built this community where we can all circle and support each other and witness each other but she kind of like insinuated that anyone that's a part of this group is like so stupid that they could just blindly follow someone and then do whatever that they say. And, and, and then goes on to tell us to trust ourselves. And like, what makes you think that we're not trusting ourselves? What makes you think that we're not in community with other women who are also trusting us, who are showing us their power and helping us recognize our own and, I mean, yeah, it's it's not a trend. It's not like a new Fendi bag that I got to like post online and be like, look what I got. I mean, people thought I was fucking insane. I was in the middle of nursing school. People told me I was going to die and that I was reckless. And, you know, my husband didn't support me and it took months to get him on board. Like this was not easy. I did not choose this because I wanted to be applauded. You know, I wanted to survive birth. I wanted my baby to survive. I wanted the chance to have an undisturbed birth that I felt like the midwives who had supported me before had stolen from me. And to give myself the best chance at that undisturbed birth meant I needed to be at home with only my immediate family present. And I'm not rigid in that. I have three kids now. My next birth, I may want to call in a friend to come and support me while my husband supports our kids or support my kids while my husband supports me. I mean, it flows and it moves and it changes as our lives change and as we grow and 
we just have to trust that women are making the best decision for themselves, which I found interesting that that's how she kind of ended the podcast after she just basically said that that's not what she believed in. I don't know if I was misreading this, um, possibly, but it struck me that there might have been kind of a subtle denigration of um, just the the overall idea of um, uh, birth education being a valid form of preparation for free birth, um, and that was such an interesting aspect of of the uh, of her discussion as well. Because of course, you know, Emily, you and I have created this. This online course, the Complete Guide to Free Birth, and um, it just—I—I I think that what occurred to me when Marion was speaking is that she just obviously doesn't really is it just isn't familiar with the community that you've created or the educational offering that that we made together because you know it's emphasized throughout our online course that. Um, you know, this isn't the totality of 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 learning, um, and that there absolutely are risks, and that uh, you know, engaging with the medical system if you feel called to is absolutely appropriate and and an important thing to do. Um, and at the same time, you know, I really stand by that course and the material in it um, as being incredibly comprehensive and you know, an excellent immersion in the kind of fundamentals of the physiology of birth and, and so much more as well. So uh, I don't know. It just felt, um, yeah, it felt hurtful to, 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 uh, it, it seemed as though maybe she was pointing to, to the educational offering well, that we created. Plus uh, she used to sell a free birth course. So. Right. But she's matured beyond that. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts to wrap up? I mean, maybe this connects to that a little bit and this idea that women don't really understand or or this podcast really seemed to reveal that maybe Marin doesn't understand um, what is happening in the free birth community, whatever that is. Uh, I think points again to just how incredibly powerful this podcast offering is because you know, I, I love all the wisdom that you share, Emily, but, um, fundamentally this podcast is other women speaking their stories. And I mean, how many, you know, a hundred more women are here in this space telling their story? Like you can't face that and not see that this is an incredibly diverse, powerful community of women who, for all of the hundred different reasons that women chose to birth in this way, all came out incredibly transformed um, in their their feminism, their motherhood, the way that they engage their community. Um, it's it's life changing, and it's it's not uh, you know movement, not movement, whatever. These are just women's stories. This is mm-hmm. women's lives. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Well, okay, let me say, Marin, if you have listened to this, Yolanda and I would love to offer you our Complete Guide to Free Birth course for free as a gift um, if you're interested in Tamargo too. So, so let us know and we'd be happy to gift you that so that you can get familiar with our material. Um, you know, we have invited you into our community uh, in the past and you've declined. So it's a little confusing what you're speaking on because you do seem so out of touch with the free birth um, community in which we are actually very in touch. So I'm so glad to have the opportunity to clarify all of this today. Um, Well, I so appreciate all of your voices and willingness to jump into this and just kind of see where it went. Um, Yeah. I think it was good. I think it was, um, I think that, you know, this is a hard conversation to have. I think we were all super uncomfortable about it. And, (laughs) and yet, you know, we've all been really angry for a week and, and needed to, you know, do something, um, about it. And, and this is truly an effort to be not just talking shit and be catty, but to use our anger 
um, you know, to express and to put out content that we stand behind and to share um, openly, you know, to dis- to disagree openly. I think that that is totally valid and important. And as we know in today's, you know, social media situation, you're like not allowed to disagree. And it gets so quickly um, deconstructed into just like a weird, gross, insulting, you know, named and slurs and all this stuff. And, mm. and obviously we're not going to do that. And go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I, I actually think that passive aggression is a fundamental aspect of horizontal aggression. And, and I think it's important, um, especially as women to, you know, speak openly about, Mm-hmm. the messages and the material that other women are putting out in the world. And I think it's it's important to do that with transparency rather than kind of subtly signaling to each other in these kinds right. of passive aggressive ways, which which to me feels much more in keeping with with that whole notion of horizontal hostility. So mm-hmm. I, I I it is very uncomfortable to have this conversation. I don't you know I don't I don't yeah. So I, I'm I'm glad that we were able to do this with with a sense of openness and yeah. I mean, we, we have to, we have to be a part of like what we want to see, you know, and, and we, we have to be the sisters that we want to, to have. And, you know, we've, we talk about this a lot in our community, but like sisterhood often means getting checked. I have big sisters. I've had big sisters since I was a teenager. Like I got checked all the fucking time. I still get checked. You know, that is a part of, um, of being in authentic relationship. And so now with these public platforms and being kind of sister companies, but then also having this like huge fundamental, like, apparently, you know, dis- disagreement, you know, from th- their recent content in the past year. Um, I do think that it, it's hard as females in patriarchy to, you know, come out uh, very transparently and even angry and to disagree. And, you know, it's so, it's so, uh, funky, you know, we're like not allowed. There's not really any space for that. So obviously anyone who listens to my podcast knows I get angry all the time. And so I'm happy to use a space that I've already like carved out where anger is super, super allowed, um, that it's healthy, that it's a, it's a healthy way to be in conversation and it feels productive. And, and actually, you know, I, I, in a, in a weird way, I actually feel very grateful to Marin's podcast, a, because it showed some true colors I, I didn't, I had suspected, but I didn't really know. And so I'm, I'm always happy to get clarity there. Um, but also because it did inspire a lot of energy movement in both myself and many, many women in our community. And it, it inspired an incredible conversation in our membership. Um, that so many just, God, just such intelligent women, you know, unpacking their feelings about this and sharing their perspectives. And so you know, I guess part of getting triggered is, you know, like she says in one of her, in one of her things is, is about doing our own work. And I did feel very triggered. We all did about this and it manifested itself into some really beautiful conversations and inspired me to be in even more integrity with my message and with the content I put out and in my community. So, um, totally. Yeah. So thank you, Maren. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today and for being willing to do this kind of vulnerable, vulnerable attempt at something kind of new for all of us. Uh, I really value each of you so much and, and, and what you, what you had to say and what you brought to this conversation and what you all bring to our community at large. So thank you all so much for being here today. And I hope that, I hope this message gets, uh, (laughs) heard and received as we intended. Yeah, thank you. I'm so honored to be in community and sisterhood with all of you. Thanks for starting this and having the courage to put it out there. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel totally honored to be able to bring my perspective to this conversation and and just really be angry and and feel heard and validated in, in how I reacted to that podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, you know, this is my first time, and I think everybody else has done podcasts before, but this was really 
uh, nerve wracking. <laughs> I think probably for everybody a little bit. And then, um, but it was it was great to be able to talk to you about to all of you um, about this. And you're also you're all so smart. <laughs> so I'm honored and, to be amongst you. <laughs> thank you. And speaking our truth is hard. Yeah. You know, speaking truth is hard. It's really hard. And then you add being a woman on top of it. You know, it is it is really complex and it's really challenging. And, you know, we do it anyway, right? Uh, I love you all. Thank you so much, everyone. Love you, women. Thank you. That's it for today, everyone. Join us next week for another episode of the Free Birth Podcast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your body, your choice. Lots of love.